Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and we've got a dreaded word problem again. Let's take a look. It says Choxo Lots candy bars are on sale five for three dollars. So here we have a relationship uh, between candy bars, five candy bars, and money, three dollars. How much would it cost Jeanette to buy a hundred candy bars to pass out to the neighborhood children for Halloween? Now, I want to point out to you that now I have the same relationship again. They're asking me how much would it cost. The thing I'm looking for is money. How much money? To buy a hundred candy bars. So I see this repeated relationship. The relationship between candy bars and money happens twice. This is a really good sign that you're looking at a proportion problem. We have the same relationship. We're assuming that candy bars always cost the same amount. So if we pay, uh, you know, $3 for five of them, how much are we going to pay for 100 Anytime you have equal relationships like this, that's known as a proportion. You can set up a proportion problem. Fraction equal to fraction. We will put a relationship in the left-hand fraction and then we will mirror that in the right-hand fraction. Let me show you what I mean. Let's start with our first relationship. Candy bars are on sale five for three dollars. What does that mean? That means five candy bars, the top of my fraction is candy bars, cost three dollars. The bottom of my fraction is dollars. As long as I mirror that same relationship in my other fraction, I'm going to get a true equivalent proportion problem that I'll be able to solve. So let's go mirror it on the other hand side. It says, how much would it cost? That's my unknown. How much would it cost? That's the thing I don't know. Well, I don't know the number of Dollars. Cost is measured in dollars. So when you don't know something in algebra, you use a letter. So I'm going to put a D down here on the bottom of my fraction. Why did I put it on the bottom? Because in the other fraction, I had dollars on the bottom. So in this fraction, I have to keep my dollars, which happens to be the unknown, on the bottom. And then it says, how much would it cost Jeanette to buy 100 candy bars? That 100 represents the number of candy bars. So I'm going to put it up top in the numerator so that it lines up with the other fraction. Again, the other fraction had candy bars on top and dollars on the bottom. So this fraction will also have candy bars on top and dollars on the bottom. And now I've set up a proportion problem that I can solve using... Uh, algebra. Now, if this isn't the way you set up this problem, don't you worry about it. There's more than one way to do this. I'm just doing it algebraically. Okay, so since this is a uh, proportion problem, uh, I can cross multiply. We learned that cross uh, products are equivalent. So I'm going to multiply 5 times d and cross products are equivalent. So I'll set that equal to the other cross product, three times 100 or 300. And now this is just a very simple one-step equation. Uh, I need to get D by itself, so I will divide away that five. And again, in algebra, when you do something, you do it to both, when you do a ch make a change, I'm sorry, you make it to both sides so that your equation can be balanced. So on the left-hand side, multiplying and dividing by five cancel, leaving me with just D. And on the right-hand side, 300 divided by five would be 60. So how much would it cost Jeanette to buy a hand, 100 candy bars to pass out to the neighborhood children for Halloween? Jeanette's looking uh, at $60. Uh, she might want to consider fun size bars. <laughs> All right. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer it.